Hey everybody, Stephen Key here, and once again, I'm bringing on a special guest to help you bring your ideas to market through licensing or through venturing, I don't care, but the goal is to help you understand uh, some of the things you can do to do a good job. So, Jesse, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Um, thank you for reaching out to me on, on LinkedIn because you have a very interesting background. Tell us a little bit about what you do. So I am an engineer, mechanical engineer. I uh, own a, a small uh, prototyping uh, product development uh, type company. Um, we, uh, we specialize in taking uh, an idea uh, in the form of a napkin sketch or just an, a verbal idea, um, you know, concept uh, from uh, an entrepreneur or an inventor or even, you know, regular companies uh, that are already established that have ideas. Um, and I take them uh, through the process of um, realizing their idea. Uh, if maybe it's sometimes it's just CAD drawings, 3D models that, you know, demonstrate a bunch of different ways to accomplish what they're trying to do. Or sometimes it's, um, you know, taking it further, prototyping 3D models, sometimes just a quick thing so that they can, or a quick part that they can hold in their hand, feel the ergonomics of something, or uh, sometimes it's um, as basic as working out a mechanism. We want to try to fit a mechanism in a certain size package. Can we do that? Can you work out something? And we'll do something like that. Uh, other times, it's uh, somebody that has um, a product uh, similar to another product, but they want to make it their own. They want to add their own features and that sort of thing. Okay. And mm -hmm. I will take those, uh, you know, take those ideas and put them on paper, put them on the screen uh, so that we can see how, uh, you know, different things will work together or, you know, this. There's a million different things okay. uh, that I've done in the past. Um, from, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Tell me, um, you've got an interesting background. Tell me, you you worked for a few other companies, right, in the toy industry, yes. but also in the, is it what is it called, the baby industry? What do you call that? Um, I call it, I, when, at my past um, employment, I worked, I worked for a couple of different product development companies. Uh, in a past life, they call it juvenile. Um, Sippy cups, um, uh, utensils, um, baths, slings, um, potties, all kinds of interesting things like that. Okay. So, um, But also in the toy industry as well, is that correct? Yes, yes. Uh, we, we work closely with Hasbro um, when I, at, at my previous employment. Okay. Um, we were always doing games and uh, some little robotic toys. Um, Okay. You know, we worked with um, we worked with pretty much all the major companies, Mattel, um, and uh, some some of the juvenile companies were like Summer Infant, and um, we worked with Durrell, uh, which is a Safety First, um, Graco, a lot of those larger okay. um, <laughs> larger offshoot companies of them. So, so, so let me so tell me this. You're the guy that brings these ideas to life, okay? All right, and really proof of concept. And I wanna talk about proof of concept because in most industries, when you're an inventor submitting an idea, you might send them a sell sheet or maybe a drawing, but sooner than later, if they like it, they're gonna say, mm -hmm. hey, I need a prototype, okay? So I wanna talk about the different types of prototypes for just a minute. If I just need to show a proof of concept, it can be pretty ugly. Do you help people with that? And what would that look like? Yes. I mean, what I would try to do is I would try to model something in 3D that is uh, what I would call a looks like, feels like type of product um, to give them a shape idea or, um, you know, something that um, something that they can hold in their hand, something that they can you know, sit back and look at it for a few weeks and say, do I want this? Do I want it? Maybe it should have some rubber, you know, uh, over molding where it has some, you know, uh, tactile, you know, type rubber surfaces or, uh, you know, maybe it's um, maybe it's something that 
uh, like I said, a mechanism or, um, you know, they want to see how something works. Maybe the mechanism isn't reminiscent of what the final product will be, okay. but they can mm -hmm. test the feel of how okay. if something's spring loaded or if um, if things are moving correctly, um, you know, okay. it's it's important to, to get the physical aspect of a prototype down and then narrow it down into how it looks okay. uh, or mm -hmm. how it works. Um, you know, there's, there's so many different aspects sure. of how sure. a product, product uh, excuse me, a prototype um, interacts with, you know, their audience, so to speak. Okay. You know? So let's say you do the first one and they want to see something a little bit more, right? Because you, you start here and you, there's a lot of iterations, okay, especially with some input. So this first one, maybe it's a 3D printed, maybe it's, it's something you build for someone, but they, let's say an inventor wants to take it further or the company wants to see even more. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's got moving parts or maybe it, it has some uh, electrical components to it. What is that called? Is there a name for that or is it just the well, process? I would call that maybe a, a working prototype, you know, or a, um, you know, something that demonstrates a little more than, you know, how it looks, how it feels. Um, maybe something that shows uh, a little more uh, closer to the end result, okay. you know, uh, something that, uh, might be easily serviced. You could take it apart, um, you know, change a few things inside, or uh, you know, maybe maybe there's a circuit board in there, and the circuit board, um, you know, the 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 size of the circuit board needs to be increased or something like that. But something that you have a little wiggle room with. Okay. It still mm -hmm. might not be the refined end result of the prototype, but it's something that you can you know that you can work with. I I try to design in a little bit of wiggle room sometimes with stuff not knowing how you know not knowing uh, how things might change in the future that way you're not building six you know six prototypes or six full prototypes every time okay. you have the hooks to be able to modify your prototype maybe get a little more value out of that prototype you know so so what let's step back for just a minute all right so i'm an inventor I do a sell sheet, a company sees it, they say, hey, proof of concept. And let's say I cannibalize, I Frankenstein something, okay. <laughs> and of course, they're going to want something a little bit more. I come to right. someone like you that has the background that knows how to do this. And I do the first one is called a, a works like. It might be pretty ugly, but it kind of shows how it feels. The second one might be a looks like. It gets a little bit closer to what this thing actually could be. Then the third one, let's say I want this thing to look like the real deal. That maybe yeah. it's even ready for production. What is that called? Is that a name so that would be, a, I, would, I would probably say that'd be closer to a, maybe not a final prototype, but, but very close to a, maybe a production quality prototype. That might be something that, um, you know, it has, you know, parts that are uh, assembled together with, with standard manufacturing, um, you know, manufacturing processes, uh, screws, snaps, maybe, um, it kind of would demonstrate a little bit more than what the product actually is. It would also partially demonstrate how the part is manufactured, okay. how the product is made. All right, let's, let's talk about that for just a minute because that's pretty important, isn't it, Jesse? If, um, if, I'm, submitting, if, if I'm submitting a product to a company and it gets pretty serious, um, is it important for me to help them or maybe know how this thing's going to be manufactured, material, components? Because if I don't know that and they take my prototype and they get a cost, you know, they go out and get it quoted, it could be too expensive. So how important is it to, to really know how this thing's going to be made? I think at the final stage when you're, you know, when you're at that point and you're ready to, start production with something. It's, I think it's very important to have your, your final prototype be as close to the manufactured good as possible. So um, your plastic parts would probably have draft in them. Um, your screw bosses would be where you want them to be, um, you know, aesthetically and that sort of thing. And you'd want to also be uh, looking at bill of materials costing, um, making sure that 
uh, the, the things that you're doing, maybe even have some of the plastic parts uh, quoted for tooling, just so that you know where you stand with those things. And also the, you know, the feasibility um, of some operations in plastic parts. Some, there's some things that you just can't do um, certain ways. There's some parts that need to be molded and pulled from certain directions. Okay. Um, and there's also like snaps and features Sometimes you need to have a tool that has uh, action, uh, movement or something like that. It gets very expensive. Sometimes there's ways that you can design parts to not need expensive tooling. Like, okay. Like that. Would, would you say that the professional inventors know this type of information or know how to get it? I would say probably not. I, I think manufacturing is probably uh, something that a lot of inventors don't take into consideration there. Their minds are focused on, um, you know, their product as a, a functional uh, thing. You know, they're looking at their product from a standpoint of, you know, um, I want to make this thing. Uh, I want it to be accepted. Um, I want to make sure that it functions the way that I envision it in my head. But, uh, they're not looking, I don't think they're looking forward to. But don't the, I guess what I'm asking is, if you really want to be a professional at this, and I know yeah. a lot of people in the toy industry are, are pretty, some of the top guys are pretty good at this. And it seems mm -hmm. like a lot of them understand this process you're talking about. So they do have, they are prepared for some of that information mm -hmm. um, because they know it's going to come up. Um, All right. I consider those guys pros. I mean, they, they, they know to contact. If they don't know it, they know to contact you. Okay, so th <laughs> that's what I call the pros. Um, here's a question I have. Do you have to build this prototype that's ready for production at the very beginning, or is that a mistake? No, I think, I think you, um, you want to make sure that you have the hooks for production in your earlier prototypes but maybe not your first prototype. You really, your first prototypes want to, uh, their, their purpose really is to prove your concept, uh, make sure it looks the way you want it to look, uh, make sure it functions the way you want it to function uh, with the hooks in there for future manufacturing. Um, it's important because um, there's a lot of prototypes that can be made and people can make you a prototype that may not be um, something that you can take to market okay. in its state. Uh, this, uh, and sometimes I've, I've ran into cases where um, somebody had a prototype made by uh, another company or something like that. They brought it to us and said, this is our prototype uh, to make this manufacturable uh, in its current state. Uh, it, it's impossible. And we want you to take it to that next level and um, make it manufacturable. Uh, sometimes the shape has to change. Sometimes, and and the inventor didn't didn't want that. They didn't want to change certain aspects of it. And it was a very difficult thing because there were no hooks that could have been placed in there in the beginning to you know to help morph their product into a manufacturable part. So know? what do you, what do you mean by the word hooks? You said that a couple uh, times. Hooks, I mean, um, would be a. Um, sorry that I can't explain it easier than I can say hooks. Um, but a hook is would be something that is uh, a, a feature okay. uh, that would help you. Um, Got it. Okay. Would help you apply a manufacturing strategy. Oh. Um, you know. Okay. Maybe something is glued together for the first prototype. Um, a good example of a hook would be, um, you know, screw bosses, um, you know, maybe some internal features that um, that have um, draft okay. built into them already okay. so that they can be pulled out of a mold. Uh, and if you do certain things like that in the beginning, you kind of know where you stand right. when you do your final prototype or you're close to your final prototype. You know? Well, I think the thing that's really important for anyone that's listening to this video is that if you work with someone that's building a prototype, you want to make sure they have manufacturing knowledge. Is that correct, Jesse? Yes, I, I think that's very important because um, 
you, you could you could run into trouble uh, later on in your prototype stages, and the inventor might not be happy with the outcome um, with their product in its manufacturable state. Okay. You know, wonderful. Is there anything else that you can help um, our listeners that are ready to build prototypes? Is there anything you can tell them that would help? If they're going to reach out to someone like you, what do you need to see to help them? Do you need to see a, a drawing? Does that have to be a CAD drawing? And what do you need to get started? To, to get started, uh, I, I really just need an idea. Um, you know, maybe somebody comes to me with, you know, just a verbal. I'm looking for this that does this and it has a handle, and, you know, um, or, you know, it has a circuit board inside with some LEDs. And, and maybe they can send, uh, maybe they can spend a little time doing a storyboard. Um, you know, I want something that looks like this and show products that are similar or have a similar shape to what they're looking for. Um, and then they might show something if it has a mechanism in it. They might say, I want it to kind of operate like this mechanism. Spend a little time on the internet, look at other people's products. And, you know, anywhere you look, you know, you might see something that is similar to what you're looking for. If you see how a mechanism moves or, you know, how, um, you know, how even as uh, electronics, how something behaves, uh, something on a little screen that, you know, has an animation and you're like, oh, geez, you know, I don't want this particular animation, but I would like to have an animation similar to that when you turn the thing on or, you know what I mean? So if they have a little storyboard and they put together a, a bunch of links with notes attached to the links that way you know somebody could review those and and kind of get more than just you know a napkin sketch from the inventor and, and you know all of you. you want something it's I want it to have this shape I want it to have this look this feel you know go to your local store and you know and, and take pictures of things or something like that and uh, you know and, and kind of build a storyboard of what you want the initial design or how you want this thing to be designed. You know? uh, great advice. Okay, everybody, um, if you need someone to help you, and this has been a fantastic video, all the information to find Jesse will be down below. Jesse, thank you very much for, for kind of pulling back the curtain on what happens and what, how you need to be prepared to build that either uh, looks like, works like, or something that looks that's ready for production. I appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. It was a pleasure.